What? Yeah. No, I'm... Yeah, I'm behaving myself. I'm, no, I'm not playing in abandoned buildings. What? Again? Now. I suppose you had those people follow me again. Fine. Hey, this is Jimmy Farrow from Monty and the Farrow, and I want to thank all our subscribers. We have now passed 14,000 on our YouTube channel, but I want to ask our subscribers to take the next step for us and become a full-fledged member of Monty and the Farrow. Yeah, that's right, folks. There's three different levels to choose from. There's free shirts. There's free autographs. Just check it out and become a member of Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty and the Pharaoh. Later. All right, welcome to Long Island's number one pro wrestler broadcast, Monty Nefaro, only seen here out of Indie Music TV, straight out of Ron Konkuma, Long Island, on a special Wednesday show where, bro, yeah, this is Backlund-esque. Yeah, it is. The icon, yeah. Johnny Rods. Yep. I cannot wait. But first, Saudi Arabia and the U.S. on high alert after warning of imminent Iranian attack. Saudi Arabia shared intelligence the U.S., Warning of imminent attack from Iran on targets in the kingdom, putting the American military and others in the Middle East to elevated alert status. I don't want to go too deep into it. Everybody knows what's going on, and I feel like a real jerk off saying this, but I'm going to say it. What? What does that mean for the pay-per-view Saturday? <laughs> I'm serious. There's more important things to worry about. You're right. Right. What about the pay-per-view? I can't believe I'm bringing it up, but... Yeah, well, you know what? I always see... <laughs> I got to be honest. When I see situations like this, what's the first thing you think of? I'll tell you what the first thing I think of is... What do you think of? The safety of those guys going over there. Absolutely. And right away, I'm worried, you know, because at any given moment, and I, you, you wonder if it ever will happen... Has a celebrity ever been taken hostage from another country? Like, you know, I, I don't. It's a good question. I don't think so. That's a very good question. So could you just imagine what would happen if, God forbid, they, uh, you know, seized a few WWE superstars? Could you imagine? I could imagine. I mean, just imagine any celebrity of any kind. But so the reality of it, safety. we're looking at World War. Yeah, well, more, more importantly, you had to bring up the pay-per-view, but more importantly, by the way... Um, United Nations have anything to say about this? I mean, how long have we been trying to keep Iran, uh, you know, uh, compliant? How long, Mike? Our whole Quite lifetime? A while. Our Quite whole a while. lifetime? The whole lifetime. Is that safe to say? Yep. So what does the UN have to say about this? Anything? I haven't heard. They got anything to say I about it? I um, You know what else worries me a little bit? It's, it's, it's kind of strange, but yes, we, we are tied businessly with Saudi Arabia, but um, our president, to be honest, has not been exactly warm towards them either. So this is a very interesting yeah. and potentially... He hasn't been warm towards anybody. Extreme, right, this is true. Extremely, well, it seems to be at least. I know um, the previous president was. Previous president, uh, well, I don't think that they be were... Be careful. Tread lightly. Yeah, guys, you know we what? still are suspended, yeah, you just know, so you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's know. going on here, but, but anyway, hi! Um, keep it that way. Yeah, let's keep it that way. Yeah, I really have uh, no comment. How's that sound? Does Little that Patty sound? says, hi, Jimmy and Mike. Glad to hey. see you back. Little Patty, thank you. Appreciate it. Loose in the house. Phil's in the house. Mr. We got Mitch Phil. in the house. Loose. Who else we got yes. hanging out here on this Wednesday? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. What is going on, one and all? What is going on? One well, and all. So anyway, convalescing. Yeah, I yeah, returned. Yeah. You know, I returned Ooh, to work today or yesterday, actually, working from home. How's but that I going go. For I you? go physically. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. But I saw a documentary today while I was working, and it was called "The Inside the Jerry Fal Fal Falwell." Falwell what was it? Falwell. 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 Jerry Falwell. Oh, Love yeah. Triangle. Pool boy <laughs> tells all. So it's this pool boy. Pool boy. Who Falwell's <laughs> wife, who you can see on there, pretty good looking lady. Huh? Eh, hits on this eh, pool boy, yeah. and, uh, oh, and Jerry likes to watch. 
and this goes on for Jerry years and years and years. To watch. And uh, well, when they go for a dip. I mean, uh, in the, the pool? They go for a dip. They okay, do a lot of dipping. You. They I do a lot of stuff. Yeah, and, okay. you know, Falwell eventually became very entwined with uh, former President Trump. Okay. And uh, okay. eventually uh. the world finds out that this was going on. And there's a lot of other incriminating <laughs> things that went on, too. <laughs> but what would you think? Is it such a big deal that a guy watches while his wife gets banged from another guy? Um, I, Personally, I would rather not even know about it at all. How's that sound? Uh, who cares? I mean, but uh, wait a minute. Isn't he? Uh... Brian Starr says, where's Johnny Rods? Johnny Rods is coming he's, on. He's coming. He's this coming. is a television show, sir. <laughs> this is not just a straight shoot interview. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Opening monologue. You okay. Know, we have a monologue. We have tonight show. sponsors <laughs> we have to talk about. We have commercials. Yeah. And then the icon will be there. Yeah. If you're looking for a straight interview, by all means, go over to Hannibal's channel and, and watch him interview Fritz Von Erich. All right? Thank you. Wait a minute. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> interview Fritz von Eric. Not Fritz von Eric. <laughs> must, Lance von Eric. must have been a very silent kind of interview there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. Uh, yeah. Oh. Um, well, I mean, I, I guess this is the price for well pays for being a public, uh, pubic uh, public figure. And uh, that's the way it goes. Personally, I don't give a damn what he does with his, uh, with his spare time as far as the kicks he gets out of whatever, watching, whatever. That's, I guess that's I, I honestly don't think it's a bad, a bad deal. And she was a pretty good-looking lady, too. Uh, yeah, well, if you say so. Anyway, to the right of, to, to the right of, the, of me is the star of the show, Mr. Uh, Jimmy Farrow. Jimmy, along with his partner, Bart Griggs, make up the band Wisteria Hall. Bart, man! Wisteria Hall makes such great songs as My Dreams, This Life, Not Far Behind, Here yeah. Comes a Rain, and the Monty and the Farrow theme song, uh, Riding High. Uh-huh. Please go to the Wisteria Hall YouTube page, hit like and su- subscribe. Go to Spotify, iTunes, or Reverb Nation, or where music can be downloaded, and please support this incredible band. Thank you. Monty Nefaro can be seen on YouTube, the Monty Nefaro page, where over 2 million viewers have seen their show. Monty Nefaro Facebook Live page, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor, Twitch TV, Monty Nefaro page. And the new cable contract has been signed on Channel 115 every Wednesday at 7 p.m. and then Saturday at 11 a.m. Did I get my carton of Twinkies? That was one of the things that was holding this deal You up. did, yep. Nice. That's coming. Sugar Rush. Channel 20 at 8 p.m. So okay. those are the new. Please log in and remember that. We want to thank Amazon Music for allowing us to be on their platform. Thank you, thank you. We'll be right back with one of the all-time greats. I am... So happy to have this legend on this show. We said Bob Backlund esque. Yeah, man. The unpredictable Johnny Rods. After this commercial, Joe LeQ style. You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto Excellence. Collision Specialists. 631 261 6420. That's 631. 631- Two six one six four two zero Auto Excellence and APB American Protection Bureau voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call six three one three nine zero nine zero five zero. That's six three one three nine zero nine zero five zero APB. Hey folks, this is Wolfie D here, and if you are looking to buy or sell a home in Tennessee or Southern Kentucky, you're going to want to call my buddy, the rock star realtor, Benji Bowie. And you say, Wolfie, how do I get in touch with this rock star? Well, you can call him directly at 615-390-8216. You can go to his website, BowieHomes.com. That's B-U-I-E Homes.com. Or you can email him at BenBowie34 at gmail.com. B-E-N-B-U-I-E-34 at gmail.com. When you need a home, you need the Rockstar Realtor. Tell him Wolfie sent you. Benji is a member of Exit Realty's Garden Gate team in Gallatin, Tennessee. That's right, folks. Canine Corral for all your dog daycare and overnight care. Call 631-549-1544. That's 631-549-1544. Jimmy, I gotta take a dump. What? No, I mean I need a dumpster. 
Well, for all those needs, you need to call Big V Dumpster Rental, Long Island, New York, 631-900-DUMP. Elm Logistics. For all your logistic needs, call 631-299-3595. That's 631-299-3595. Elm Global Logistics. Pride, performance, and partnerships. And Nitro's Garage for all your automotive needs. Call 646-675-2349. That's 646-675-2349. For all your automotive needs, Nitro's Garage. Ask for Jack. In the mood for a freshly roasted cup of coffee? www.offtherailscoffeeroasters.com Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the great Johnny Rods. Johnny! Rods. Johnny! You, you see me now, right? I see you I now. See I, see you now. I see you. Don't move that don't camera. Move that don't move that camera. Right, you look right, beautiful. Right, 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 no, no, I'm just right putting it down. I'm, I'm, I'm holding it. I got to put it down. <laughs> Yo, Johnny, you look Yo, like Johnny, you're 50 you or 40 50 years old, bro. 40 years old. Brother. Listen, guys, listen. I'm sorry, but whatever, whatever reason. I, I kept getting it and losing it at the same time. Every time I got it, I lost it again. Hey, maybe if my name was Bradshaw, name things was would Brad be different. Shaw, no, 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 listen. <laughs> listen, that, that happened with Briscoe uh, two weeks ago. Oh, and yeah. oh, yeah. we, 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 we just kept, they kept having a problem. And then all of a sudden, we were okay. okay. But what happened was I was having a problem with my phone. And my daughter said, let me try my phone. And the freaking thing, bingo, nope, the same shit and came out. Now, I guess, it ha I don't know, maybe it's a shitty fucking phone. Well, right now, well, it looks right good. Now, it looks Stay good. steady. Stay steady. And thank you and for joining thank us. thank you for joining us. Well, I don't see you guys. I only see me. All right, well, that's good enough. Right, well, you're, not you're not missing yeah, anything. Yeah, you better anything. off. Yeah, you better off. Ugly. We're kind of ugly. <laughs> well, how come? How, there's, there, there, there's a way I can see you, no? Yeah. Yeah. But and I don't. But, I, I, I don't only know if you see myself mess with it right now. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you. You don't yeah, want to lose me. Yeah, and the fans, the fans can see you. The fans can it's, see you. It's nice if I see you guys. The expressions. Well, you know what? I could pop well, you, know you up. What? On, I could pop you up on my my. On I my saw you guys the, before. I saw you, both of you guys, and I didn't see me. Now I'm. I only see me, and that was. That's it. Well, let me ask you, who's the better well, looking guy? The, the bald guy, guy or the guy? No, there? no, no, guy no, you guys. You guys are the best. <laughs> no, you're the best. <laughs> no, you're the best. <laughs> All right, Johnny. All right, Johnny. Uh, uh, you're originally from Puerto you're originally Rico, from correct? You're originally from Puerto Rico, correct? Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, all, 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 all the way. So 
how does someone so become a professional become wrestler a professional coming from Puerto Rico? Coming Coming from Puerto Rico? Was this a dream, or did you just roll into it? Well, coming from Puerto Rico doesn't stop you from being a wrestler. It's uh, who knows? Puerto Rico has all kinds of uh, athletes, but in the sense of uh, anything. But I mean, I, when I came here, I was 11 and a half, and I have no idea I'm going to be a, any anything, especially a wrestler. So, so. Uh, starting starting the point about being a wrestler, when I was uh, young, you know, 13, 14, I was already doing a little boxing and trying to do a little judo because I joined the judo club and trying to do, you know, I never played baseball or basketball. <clears throat> when I, was, I did a little bit in junior high, but I never liked uh, ball playing. I always loved the... Uh, the, the, the fighting sports or whatever the heck is uh, wrestling and all the uh, other stuff, you know? Were you happy to be you uh, happy moved to out be, of Puerto Rico uh, at the age? Rico That's a rough age. That's a rough age. Like 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 well, 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 look, look, look. Happy to come here? 11 and a half. It doesn't matter what, what age you are. I, I was born up in the hills of Puerto Rico, uh, way up in the hills. Uh, with, with Guys, I come from where there is no... No light, no, no electricity, no no running water, no uh, no gas, no nothing. You you you're up you're up with the Indians, way up in the hills. And, uh, that's where I was born. I mean, I'm not. Uh, there's no shame in saying I'm a hillbilly. I'm, I'm a hillbilly, uh, born in the hills of Puerto Rico and raised in the concrete jungle here in Little Italy, in New York. Nice. So Johnny, how do you break it so to your parents? So you get to become a professional wrestler. You don't. You don't break it. It, it doesn't happen. Uh, you you grow over here from uh, eleven and a half. Uh, by the time you get out, uh, actually, how can I finish school at eleven and a half? I never been into school except for a month in Puerto Rico, and they took me out and brought me here. And uh, at the age of twelve, they put me in the fourth grade. How the heck do you learn your ABCs in English? And how do you how do you start to speak English? How do you start to uh, do anything like timetables? And you, 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 you could call yourself a dummy, but that's not your fault because you you never been to school until that time. So uh, from there on, you continue. You're trying to learn English. You're trying to learn your. You you're trying to learn something. By the time you you you're 15, 16, 17, you're already in junior high. And what do you do? You you you're your your grades are uh, uh, moronic. You you got nothing to to. There's nothing that you that you know that is anything special. Like like my grandson right now, he could he could he goes around saying hey, is he? all day long. He's singing it right to the end. Oh, I know my A B C, and I I look at him. I said, look at that. He's not even four. He already knows how to use the tablet. How about how about how old you were old when you, you decided you were going to get into professional wrestling? I mean, is this during high school? I mean, during high school you're about you're actually, you don't decide. It happens where you do things. You know, I did jiu-jitsu when I was 15, 14, 15. Uh, you know, the real jiu-jitsu, uh, the, the Chinatown jiu-jitsu with, with, uh, with my friend who was the super son who was already 18 and he used to use me for a punching bag, but uh, you know you learn the hard way sometimes. And then did a little bit of boxing, uh, you know, because I wanted to get into boxing, uh, but my mother never let me, and uh, I hide around. And then I did a little amateur wrestling at the YMCA and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And 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 when I, we first got our first uh, Dumont round TV with the antenna. And all, all, all my mother watched was boxing and, and wrestling, and she was a fanatic of wrestling, and we're all fanatic of wrestling. And then you start to like it, and you become a fan, and and then you keep going, and before you know, you're involved. You know, uh, my my time, my my jump, my uh, way of learning pro wrestling was not like the uh, like the elite guys that come from the. Uh, from the north and the south and uh, all these big states that uh, football players, uh, uh, Olympic wrestlers, whatever the heck you want to call them, and and they they come with the elite name, you know. Uh, I'm from I'm from the like I said, from the hills of Puerto Rico, from the concrete jungle of New York, and uh, you know real hardcore, and 
you're lucky to knock on the door and you get a chance to get in and and before you know you're involved with pro wrestling you started in 65 i believe no 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 my fourth match in 1963 was in the old Madison Square Garden when Bruno took the belt from Buddy Rogers in about three minutes. Wow. And I, that, wow. that, that night, I was, uh, I was called in by Arnold Skoll and told me, come and bring your bag. You might do a substitute. And they, Bruno brought a guy from Pittsburgh, about 300-something pound, and uh, about 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, uh, he was a... Uh, uh, state troop of friends of Bruno and I, I worked with him in the garden for 15 minutes shit that was my first win in the garden and in 15 minutes they put me over so uh, that was my first my fourth shot in pro wrestling wow. my first one was a comic liner the second one was in Sunnyside Garden and the uh, the third one was in Trenton New Jersey and uh the the fourth one was in the garden, and then from there on, the rest is history. Your first match was at the Comac Arena? Your first match was at the Comac Arena? Is that what you're telling me? You're telling me? Mm, yep, yep. Wow. The first match wow. with uh, Don that's McClarity. Our, that's, that's, our, that's our childhood arena. That's our childhood we went arena. We went there all the time during the, 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 the uh, late 70s and 80s. Um, yeah, I was, I was there. Were with, you in awe of Bruno when you first saw Bruno Sabatino? you Bruno Sabatino? What about it? Were you in awe of him? What you was your vibe was the your first time vibe? you looked at him? Like, wow, you like, you know right Bruno Samartino, right nothing. Right no, 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 no. Put it this way. I like told you before that we're, uh, I'm a, we're, we're, when you're a fan, you're a fan. And to you, and to you're, you break out of it after you've been in the business for a while. And knowing Bruno being uh, at that time, my first, my first, uh, Superstars that was like Antonino Rocco and Miguel Perez and uh, uh, Ricky Stars and the Graham Brothers and Scott Murphy and Ruben Ard and all those characters that were, you know, big shots in uh, at that time. But when you become one and you're sitting in the same dressing room with these monsters, you you start struck, you know, you know. But 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 uh, you you you're walking around just thinking that you're like them, you know. Your chest is up, your arms are up, even though they're not big enough. You, 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 you're lucky. You, you want to get a cauliflower ear or something? I don't know. It's uh, it, it, when you when when God when God puts you on in a spot, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. That's what happened to me. You know. What kind of person was Bruno? What kind of person if you was can Bruno? Share with us. Bruno was always a gentleman, a scholar. Bruno was always a good guy. Bruno was the years I spent in my business. I was friends with Bruno, Dominic Dinucci, uh, Cicluna, all those, all those, all those names that I'm mentioning. They were all pals from from the beginning. I started to 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 to, to they die. Thoughts on Buddy Rogers? Thoughts on Buddy Rogers as a person? Buddy Rogers, person. no problem. And then the, 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 he was he was here in the, well, in the beginning. He, he was away, and then he came back, and we're still pals. Did you notice any heat? You notice considering any you heat, were there that night, you were there between, that Buddy night between Buddy and Bruno. Well, the heat that they, they, they when put it to this way, I told uh, uh, Jerry Briscoe just uh, a couple of weeks back the same thing. I was in the dressing room like a like a fly on the wall, sitting there because it's my first time and just a rookie, and I heard loud noises in the other room, but. I won't dare to go over there and check because it's not my business. I was just sitting in the corner somewhere waiting for going on, on the, I think it was the second match of, of the third that I wrestled. And then I just sat there, uh, you know, waiting for, for, you know, to see what goes on. And I heard the commotion, but it wasn't nothing that it was my business. I didn't think it was a fight or anything like that. Then they come out to go to the arena and everybody looks like everybody is sneaky following. And I said, well, if everybody's following to see and go out to the hall and look through between the curtains and you can see your ring, you can see, you hear the belt, they announce the name, you hear the belt, and three minutes later, oh, then the winner is uh, <laughs> Bruno Sammartino. Mm. So <laughs> you wonder, wow, well, that was a fast match. That went quick. That's what I thought. But <clears throat> they come back to the dressing room, everybody goes following back to the dressing room, and I can see that everybody was doing it. But I stayed watching the rest of the, uh, 
the matches because I, I was too dumb to know that it, there, there, there was a shoot. But mm. that, that it, it, it was a shoot because they probably said, uh, as far as I know, is that they probably told uh, uh, Roger, you know, let's work this out and run the belt. But that Roger probably just wanted to be uh, a draw or disqualification or something like that. And they, he didn't want to drop it, so they probably said, okay, no problem. We go to this qualification, but they, they, they suck them. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Bruno was yep. having none of it. Bruno and that's how, you, that's how it happened. That, that's how it happened after I know many years later I know the truth because that's what it happened. But I want to tell you from the beginning that I know anything else, it's, 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 it wasn't true, you know? Right. How did you meet, How did you um, meet the great um, Vince the McMahon great Senior? Vince McMahon Senior. Uh, the, the Vince McMahon Senior. Once you once you get started, you really don't meet Vince McMahon Senior until you go to the Garden. And the first time I met him is that same night uh, that, that 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 we're talking about that that deal there. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the times he's always around in the big arenas in the Garden and. Uh, in Philadelphia, and Washington D.C., and Baltimore, you know, places like that. Maybe watch uh, Boston. Any big arena that there was uh, running uh, through the through the month or whatever, Vince McMahon Senior would show up. A nice and he was a gentleman and a scholar, you know. So his reputation proceeds. So we hear nothing but good things about Senior. So he treated you well. Then, so he treated Johnny. you well then, Johnny. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm, put it this way. Uh, I'm trying to tell you that I'm just a a kid from the from the hills of Puerto Rico and raised here in Little Italy or down the east side there, and then uh, not having the the elite education that everybody else comes in with, you know, through the, all these years, and they put them over, and everybody's a trademark or whatever bullshit it is that. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm proud of myself that I uh, tangle with Tom and Dick and Harry, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I'm still here. And uh, uh, not only still here, but I'm teaching guys in my club uh, the way the real game's supposed to be for them to be pros if they want to stay in the business, not to be doing independent shows and jumping all over the place and doing all kinds of high spot. Uh, the age of 18, 19, 20 to the 40s, and then they think that they're stars, and they got wife and kids or something like that, and then uh, they break their neck, they break their arms, uh, they crack their ribs, and by the time they're 50, 55, they haven't got into the business, and then they think they're pro wrestlers, and that's not the game. Well, you've you are an icon, John. You are an icon, and you've Johnny. So many well, yeah, so thank you, people. you know, thanks a lot, guys. You know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that. Uh, we have a little problem uh, with, you know, with the pressing of the fingers, this thing. I know you guys are watching me right now, right? Am I touching yeah. my you, head? You, you, yeah. You, you, it's, it's, yeah, this is incredible. Okay, this so incredible. to see, I'd love to see you guys. For some reason, I see I see the, uh, the, the, the background here with curtains and stuff like that, but I don't. Uh, for some reason, I don't get. I didn't get you guys, and yet well, you got me. Well, I'll, but, I'll but then you I'll, know, I'll, put I'll, it, I'm gonna I'll, say it. I'm gonna say it before you stop me. That, I I get press all I want, and if I don't know the right keys or the right <laughs> bullshit with this uh, uh, magic stuff that's going on with 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 the with the phones and all this technology, you cannot blame an 81 year old and a half uh, <laughs> character. Yeah, yeah because <laughs> let me explain something to you. Uh, uh, when we did the thing with uh, Jack, and they, they they supposed to be good at it, and they got one of the best podcasts that I've seen so far, we we also had a problem, and it wasn't me. Uh, I kept trying my phone, and then my daughter said, "Let's try my phone." And then and all I all I did is put it on bingo, and it popped in a split second, and it was perfect all the way through. And now. Maybe it's maybe it's the recession with my phone. It's Every, a good phone, but, but, but everything, I, I is, know, working, you know? everything is working. Everything's working fine. Everything's working fine. Yeah, Johnny, but it took a freaking Johnny. half an it took a, a freaking half an hour, <laughs> and, he, and, and I'm ready to buy. I'm, re to look at us. I'm, I'm ready to, 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 to put it on the floor and stamp on it. <laughs> Johnny, do me a favor. Compare senior, senior and junior. And junior.
Comparing? Way. There's no comparing. Junior, Junior, as far as I'm concerned, he made it, and he can put his tights, he can put his tights on, his boots on, and stand in front of me in Madison Square Garden, and I'll beat him in, a, in, in about 60 seconds. And 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 I, I swear to God, I, I, they, they don't take me long to to have them on the floor in 60 seconds, maybe less, because it, it only takes me. Uh, I'm, I'm good enough still to to hear this in the beers all. If you understand what I'm saying, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, I could kick him so hard that 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 he'll forget his name. What makes you want to kick him so hard? If I can so ask. Because because he's no class for for comparing to his father. Mm -hmm. And I, I and it's not that I don't like him. He, he, there's no no nothing about liking. Is that he he's, he 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 ruined the business for Tom and Dick and Harry, who I don't. I said before, there's a lot of kids and a lot of people who love the business. They want to get in it, and this guy took the world and turned it into for himself, like a like a Hitler. And now uh, it's 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 all them. It's it's in that. It has no, 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 there is no other promoters. Johnny, someone with class, Johnny, someone was, Arnold with class was Arnold Scullin. Can you tell us about your relationship Yeah, well, Arnold Scullin, Arnold Scullin, Arnold Scullin was the, the booker of the uh, control of uh, Vince, number one man running, uh, running the towns. And, and you know, uh, for, for, for years, and then Angel, Angelo Zaboldi came in behind, and then, uh, Tom and Dick and Harry and Gorilla Monsoon came behind, and and then and then Jay Jay Strombo came behind, and you know they had a slew of them. And then when Junior started to become uh, uh, involved, he also uh, you know he was just waiting for his father to die so he could come in with his big shit, you know. Was he rude to you was when he, he took to over? When he took over? Not rude, and not rude. He he he's not is that. It's not that he's rude. That I don't have nothing uh, elite that he thinks that I'm that I'm that I'm supposed to be taken care of. You know, otherwise uh, they, they they don't <laughs> they don't think that way. They 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 want they want their boys. You know, the, 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 I, I you know I hate to to to, to talk like this, but. To them, you know, you know, you know, freaking body. You understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was Hogan uh, one of the reasons you may look at wrestling? You follow me? You may look at wrestling no, I, I follow you. No, I, I follow you. Does, does otherwise does, it sounds does, like I'm angry? Or something. No, I'm not. That I'm, I'm just. Uh, I'm, <laughs> they get used to when. when <laughs> They they don't have no respect in the sense that without me you're not gonna have nobody to be put over you know what I mean right 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 and then right. And, and then when you put people over you put them all you you put them over with 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 hard and not with hate you know you know what I'm saying because it's not it's the business it's not it's not them and it's not you it's a freaking business the way the business is and the business is a great great game it's a beautiful game it's a pro game. If you know how to do a pro, does Hogan symbolize, does Hogan symbolize Vince McMahon's changing Vince of the McMahon's business? Changing to you, of the or business is to Hogan you, okay or in your eyes? Is Hogan eyes? okay in your eyes? Him changing the business? Yeah, yeah. Well, he changed. He changed the business. He said he was going to do it. He said, "I'm, I'm going to bring this. I'm going to bring this universal." He did. I mean, he's been down. Um, he, he he promoted every every. Who promotes in Arabia? Who promotes in India? Right. Nobody. Nobody right. ever. They right. they have wrestling in those country, but it's not our kind of wrestling. Right. Uh, the Indians have uh, they wrestle on the beach, and the Hindus. The Hindu been wrestling all the centuries. So so is in Arabia. So is in the Greek. So is everywhere else. But when Vince was doing here, and every promoter in every state were doing beautiful, and wrestling was beautiful. Every Every state had beautiful talent, and they, they, they share the wrestlers. They come back, back and forth to different states, and everything was so great. And now he just took it, and, and he slapped everybody in the face and took the power and went and put TV in everybody else's territory and spread on everybody and did whatever he has to do. He couldn't care less. Like I said, he's a Hitler. 
You wrestled a lot of big cards. You wrestled, cards. A lot of big you, cards. You wrestled against Excuse guys. Excuse me? Yes, guys you wrestled like a lot of big cards. A lot of big cards. No, I wrestled Tom and Dick uh, and Harry. I wrestled Tom and Dick and Harry that came in to be uh, uh, to be to, to try to see if they're gonna make it for them to use it to, 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 to right you know to make them a star so they we can make money. So who who else is better than me to to know what to do with a freaking guy to make him look good? I can no shit. I no could go on the I could, I, could, I could go in the ring with you right now and make you look like a million dollar. You could. You could. Ring the bell. Yes, I can. I can make you it. Don't no, hurt no, me. Not, honest to God, honest to God, <laughs> honest to God. I got the kind of mind. You go in the ring as long as you you're inside the square circle. I don't care if you're young or old or what. Well, look at this. You're welcome to come down to to the gym, Gleason's gym, anytime. And and watch what I do with a six three six four, nice. uh, two hundred and fifty pound guy from Virginia cowboy, and hear what the old the old man could do with him, and then you you you're not gonna believe it. So if you if I could do that now, imagine what I could do when I was forty, fifty, or sixty. Oh yeah, Johnny, oh, yeah. I remember you. Johnny, I mean, I really, you, you really, know, wrestling. everybody looks at you just because you're two hundred and forty five pound and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't come from the uh, I don't know where where the all those colleges out of there and, and they, they got that background bullshit and they come they put them over and everybody's supposed to believe that so they believe it that's the business so that's good but I don't have that I have the raw and the one and only the unpredictable one and and then I'm not unpredictable Vince my man used to say that junior he said oh you know Bruno look at this guy He's the one and only. The one and only. He's an unpredictable one. We never know what this guy's gonna come up with. Well, he enjoy every minute of me. That's why he called me unpredictable. So from there on, that's all it is. The unpredictable one. What the heck do I do in the ring? Whatever comes in mind, I'm gonna put it out. People like it, hate it, doesn't matter. That makes me number one. I remember you wrestling Ivan Pusky at Shea Stadium. Oh, Ivan Pusky! I I I could eat him with my eyes closed. <laughs> he ain't no. He, no, he he was he was just a put over guy. I don't have nothing against the man, and he's 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 okay. Just that they put him over, and he he believe it. And when I work with him, and he if. if if you're gonna if you're gonna come one two three and after I finish I'm on the floor and you're gonna put my your foot on top of me and raise your arm I'll kill you. Mm. I definitely will kill you. So you ever I would get up and I would, I, I, I would be fired. Uh, well, then I'm gonna leave because I'm gonna fucking tear you apart. You know why? Because I'm a man. You cover me and you beat me. That's it. It's all over. But if you beat me because they want you're going over, not because you beat me. The hell with you. Uh, I'm not a big, I'm not, go, uh, I'm not, uh, how do you say, uh, Hulk Hogan, uh, who weighs 300 pounds and 6'6 six, six and whatever. Uh, he could blow up too, just as good as any uh, any little guy. Johnny. And, and besides, Johnny. That's, that's, that's not the challenge. I'm not challenging nobody. I'm a regular professional worker. That's it. Johnny, in the 70s, Johnny, in the and, 70s early 80s, and early 80s, did you ever go to Studio, you 54, to Studio 54, Plato's Retreat? Plato's Retreat? And if you did, do and you have any did, stories? Do you have any stories? The Studio 54? No, I never went there. Okay. Not I, Plato's I know Retreat. you're talking Not about Plato's Retreat. That, they, they, that, that was a hangout place, you know. The boys, the boys used to boys, go there, The boys though, used right? to go there, though, right? <laughs> Well, yeah, because uh, I don't know. Uh, as far as I know, the boys go all over the place. Who went there? I have no idea. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know. I don't know. Studio Fifty Four. Uh, I don't know what kind of hangout that was. Well, who did you run with uh, who in the seventies? Who did you 70s? run with in the seventies? Everybody. <laughs> I mean, from from Bruno Sammartino to Andre the Giant. Anybody? I was one of the. Remember, I was one of the boys, so it didn't matter. It didn't. I, we had no. Uh, uh, how do you say? Uh, hey, mommy, you want to come here and say hello to the guy? Yeah, have her come in. Yeah, have her come in. Yeah, come here. Uh, I don't look good. Then. <laughs> you don't have to. It's a, it's a few days. 
Johnny, what are you doing to her? Johnny, what are you doing to her? <laughs> what are you doing to her? Hello, Johnny. How are you? How are you? Who am I talking to? And well, you're talking to Marty Nefaro. For some reason, we have the same problem. Yeah. She she came down. She hey. came down to get a drink. Jay Will go. says you have a beautiful says house. Have a beautiful house. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> okay, sweetheart. <laughs> Take care. Thank she, you. She, she, thank she, you. She, she's upstairs and she came down to get a, some kind of drink. And so she's passing by. That's why I say hello. The last time it was my daughter. Uh, you see the st the stairs behind. So she, she 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 walked down the steps and then she was crawling down the floor and I could see her back. You know, was, was in, <laughs> she didn't want to be seen on the thing. So that was with Jack and uh, Ron, Ron, uh, you know JBL. I had a nice time with them. You know I uh, they they uh, I was able to talk about a lot of stuff. Not even twenty percent, but you know. Right. You could ask all kinds of questions, and I got all kinds of answers. It just depends on how I could tell you the truth about we it. Got you know? coming, we got Johnny, more so coming, Johnny, so be prepared. Johnny, so oh, yeah, prepared. yeah, yeah. You know, you ask how you start. That's that's simple. You you, you like it. You, I did it, and I, I, I wasn't able to. Uh, listen, I went to Chelsea Automotive over here by the Holland Tunnel at the age of 17 and a half or so. Oh, they jumped me from junior high to there. I, I, my grades, uh, I still don't know the alphabets, okay? What? I don't know the alphabets. I, I know a little bit, but I could spell a little bit. I could write a little bit. I could write in Spanish a little bit. I could write in English a little bit. But guys, if you're not in school, you're in school at the age of 12, and they put you in the, in the fourth grade at the age of 12, and you don't even speak English, how the heck can you learn anything? I don't know, but you got a nice house. I don't know, but you got a nice house. <laughs> <laughs> the, the house got nothing just to do with it. I, 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 I work hard. I, I was, uh, I was, uh, I used to work for the mail delivery union for the New York okay. Post okay. and the New York Times. Okay. So, you know, I had my own route. So I was able to. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did wait you get Tito Santana that job? Because he told us he was delivering he newspapers, didn't he? Newspapers, didn't he? Well, yeah, yeah, nah, he, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, not him. Uh, uh, <laughs> Davy O'Hanan. Davy O'Hanan gave him the. He he didn't okay. do it. He tried. Okay. 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 Johnny, you lasted in the Johnny, uh, territory. The guys, the guys that the guys that work, the guys that work in the newspaper, was me first, Cicluna second, Cicluna. Dinucci third, Esti John fourth. Pete Sanchez uh, fifth, Pete Sanchez. Uh, no uh, Manuel Soto fifth, Manuel and Pete Soto. Sanchez sixth, and wow. they they all we all work in the, because Davey O'Hannon was a uh, and his father's uh, business agents and they got us into the business. You know Irish Davey O'Hannon? Sure, sure. And no, uh, Irish Davey O'Hannon, we've been I've been friends with him for since more than fifty years. Johnny, how did you survive, Johnny, 20, did years you survive 20 years in the territory in days? The territory uh, days uh, did Vince ever let you out? Did Vince ever led you out? To like other places? To like other no, places? he doesn't have to let me out. Whenever they, whenever they needed to to put somebody in a certain spot, like like in Toronto or Montreal or, or anywhere that something was going on, that they needed something to explode, I wind up there for a week or two. I went to Carolina just to help the TV. So Vince says, Johnny, you go to Carolina and, and then work on the TV for the week. So I go over there and I work with the uh, Wahoo McDaniel and I work with Ric Flair, put them over and, and they go over like a million dollars. They don't have freaking bodies to put nobody over in those days. They're very rare. They, they, and they take a guy, they put him over and after, after your guy do not like it, he'll probably leave because he feels like they, he doesn't want to do no job. With me, it don't matter. I go to Canada, I go to Texas, I go to here, only because it's a special week or two, and that's it. I go to Japan for five weeks. I was there five times, but, but that's the best deal you could get because you're going to work for Baba and, and the other guy and, and things like that. Uh, my biggest my biggest count was when I went to Pennsylvania. I mean, Pennsylvania. The, I went to... Uh, California to do Jabaruk. Well, that was in 1976. At the end of 76, I I I, I told Jerry in that joke there. Uh, we we did Philadelphia TV, and we went to uh, to Reading, Pennsylvania, to do the second TV. And you know Hamburg, you know you know you know 
you know, you know, the Reading, we used to stay there at the hotel in the crystal room. And Vince used to go over there and sit with big shots to eat steaks in the crystal room restaurant while we running around eating pizza and uh, hot dog. And uh, I was there one night and uh, Mike LaBelle and Gene LaBelle in California they had the, the chic, the original chic there for quite a while. But because at the beginning he was drawing like 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 a firecracker, but after a while, you know how he drew. He he, he, he they, they did the cut all the time. There was always blood, 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 blood. Every 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 match, every match they did, every main event, it was blood, blood, blood. Right. Mm -hmm. So after a while, how much blood can the people see? So the houses weren't not coming up at all. But yet they like this gimmick, but they don't like the idea that the house is going down because. People got tired of looking at the same shit all the time. So Vince, uh, Mike LaBelle asked Vince, you think maybe we could get Johnny over here and use the do the Jabba Rook thing, the gimmick, you know, like they are. Well, uh, they, they, I was hanging around the, the, the hotel and uh, Ernie the Cat Lat was with Vince. And uh, Vince says, if you see Johnny down the hallway somewhere, tell him I want to see him because that was the night he was there. He didn't want to tell me, he wanted to ask me if I want to go to California and be the next sheik while they got rid of the other guy. I told him, yeah, the money's good. In 1976, I want $1,500 a week. It, if I could get $1,500 a week and support my family in New York and then be able to uh, do that, I'd be glad to do it because then they're going to do the 20, 10, 22 men battle royale. I'm going to win it. You're the biggest thing in, in, in the wrestling business for a year, you know? You follow that? So, Johnny, they told so Johnny, you they you told were going to win that battle royal. Of course, of course. And yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And that, that, nice. that battle royal was that won by Bruno and Andre in previous years, correct? Years, correct? Well, the, the, the battle royale, everybody, everybody in, everybody in hell that, 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 uh, that is in the business, that is a big... Uh, uh, some kind of name or some kind of something winds up there for 22 men. Every year there's a 22 men. That's the biggest. Uh, that was WrestleMania in those years. Right. There was no WrestleMania. Right. Right. So, they, Johnny, uh, so, Johnny. The 22 men Johnny. battle royale belonged to the Olympic yeah. Auditorium with Mike LaBelle and Jim LaBelle. Mm -hmm. Johnny, I want to read Johnny, some I of the names that, won that, that won that battle royal. Harley Race. Harley Race. Wow. Rocky Johnson. Rocky right. Johnson. Bruno Sammartino. Bruno Sammartino. Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant. Toro Tanaka. Toro Tanaka. Oh, wow. Hector Guerrero. Hector Guerrero. Mando Guerrero. Mando Guerrero. And the great Andre the, the Giant. Great Andre so you're the in Giant. So you're in a good class. Well, I won. I won in 1976. Yep. Yep. Johnny, why did that and, not last? And then the Jabber Why did that not last? Why did that not last? And, that not last? <laughs> and then. And then I came back because they messed with my money, okay. and I I I, le I left them. Oh. I came back home okay. to Vince, okay. and then in 1977 I had to go back, and they did another one for 77, and then uh, I think uh, I don't know if Harry Piper won or somebody won it, and that was that was it. I I I, I they, 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 they 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 start playing with the money that I wanted. I, uh, the biggest the biggest match that I did while I was with them was in San Francisco for them with uh, uh, the cowboy uh, shit. Um, Bob Orton. Bob Orton. No, 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 no. Tom Pritchard. The Funk. Pritchard. Funk. Dory Funk. Dory Funk. Dory Funk Jr. Yes. Dory Funk. Yeah, I I, I wrestled with him okay. for 15, 20 minutes for Roy Shire. And uh, that was the biggest payoff I got ever that I got uh, because of who I was. And I, I, I came back to California. And from, I mean, I was in California. I was from San Francisco. But they messed with my money, so I, I dropped them. I dropped them, and I came back home. And then I had to go back in 77, and uh, Vincent go back and help me fix the bridge. And I went back, fixed the bridge for him, and I came back home. But I was the winner for the 76 total. Johnny, how did you come Johnny, up, with the, you come up with the Java Rook name? The very simple. Uh, uh, that was Tony Newberry, the Mongol. Remember the Mongol? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, so Vito and Ghetto, the Mongol. Remember when he brought Bruno Sammartino's territory? 
and uh, uh, Bruno sold him the territory in Pittsburgh, the TV, and uh, it, it's it's all a story. Well, when when Tony was here years ago, and then he was two hundred and probably forty pounds, and you know he's my size, and uh, he wasn't a, a, a big Gibroni. He was not. So he was here. He making you know just preliminary money. He wasn't making big money. And one day we're in Washington D.C. And, and it was a horrible to trip. And we came back to New York. And I'm sitting in the back with him. I forgot who was driving. Probably Tomas Marin uh, was driving, and Pete Sanchez on the front. And we're in the back, and uh, he was pissed because we went there, and it was a horrible day, and there was no, no, the house was a shit. And all we got is like thirty-five dollars or whatever. And he was cursing, yeah, that dad, that dad. You're making no money, all this bullshit. I, I'm, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to make money and buy Bruno Sammartino's territory one day. I said, hey, Tony, <laughs> when you do that, don't forget me. Don't forget to, 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 book, to book me in your show and make me some money. <laughs> so funny thing, I'm only joking. I think he's joking. And he went away for five years, and he come back as the Mongols, and he made nothing but money here for Vince. And uh, he did buy the territory for sixty-five thousand dollars. And then he's uh, uh, one day we're in Pittsburgh doing TV. We were in Pittsburgh to do a couple of shows, and we're gonna do TV. And he wants to put me on, but he doesn't want to put me on as Johnny Rods because I've been there as Johnny Rods, and uh, he, it's it's not hot enough. He says maybe you could do an Arab gimmick. So, but I'm there, and I don't have no Arab get up. So I cut up a, 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 a bed sheet and, and, and four ways, and I, I made this gimmick, and I took a piece of red red thing and put it around my ne uh, my head, and I I, 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 made, I made the name Java Rook, and then I went in the, I went in the ring and woo hoo hoo hoo, and I wrestled Tony Marino Batman, and we had a little scrapple where they, they had a separators, and that's the that's the born of Java Rook. You actually, you actually wrestled Batman. Wrestled Batman. Yeah. What do you mean I, I wrestled? I must have wrestled him, I don't know, 25 times, that guy. Uh, Every time I went to uh, Pittsburgh, I wrestled him all over the place. Please tell Batman, the fans. Batman, Batman the fans. And, and, and I wrestled the rule. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, his partner, what the heck is the other guy? Batman and Robin. Ro you wrestled Robin. Ro you wrestled Robin. <laughs> Of course, I wrestle everybody. That's hilarious. Uh, That's Michael, hilarious. I wrestle anybody you can mention. We've well, already. Well, not only did you wrestle anyone that I mentioned, you, also, I mentioned. Made you also made the career of so many. Of so one many. being Roddy, one Piper. Being Roddy can Piper. Can you share can the you story share on how you story made on how you Roddy, Roddy Piper? Roddy Piper. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't even get a drink down. He couldn't even get a drink down. Wait a minute. Roddy, Roddy's my Roddy's my man, man. Roddy's the uh, no, I'm drinking a little, uh, uh, you know, what do you call? Hooch? I had, I had yeah, uh, some that? fish, yeah, and I'm drinking some uh, pink pink Moscato, you know. Oh, I like pink Moscato. Oh, I like pink it's Moscato. nice. Yeah, it's nice. nice. It's just just to, just to relax us. I was out with my wife uh, with the with the baby, and we went shopping something, and phew, over here, we go we go to uh, the market. It's, I live in Staten Island, you know. It's crazy over here. Okay. Okay. Well, tell us about Piper. Well, I mean, you, you were there for the beginning. And then, let me tell you, I got back. I got back at six o'clock. My <laughs> wife says, "I want, I want shrimps and I want uh, a sweet, sweet potato and sweet bake potato. and uh, this and that." And I started cooking. I'm a good cook. Shrimps, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, shrimps. we're looking at us. Oh, gee! And then you call. I said, "Boy, I'm glad I finished on time." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Roddy Piper, Roddy Piper was a uh, Canadian kid. And he came, he, the age of 14, 15, 16, or 17, he was in Canada doing bumps and, you know, getting little shots here and there. And whoever helped him, I don't know. I, I knew, but I forgot. And then somehow at the age of 18 or something like that, he escaped through Gary Gun because he's a Canadian with no visa. And his sister was already married to somebody and lived in Oregon, so... You know where Oregon is. It's uh, down that way. And he escaped from uh, from Canada into Oregon. They were the sister from there. He went and got connection to 
play a little bit and then through there and all the way to California. And by the time I got in California, he was there for, I guess, for a year or half a year. I don't know. They were, they were giving him half a year visas, you know. And uh, he uh, really wasn't making money, making $600, $700, maybe a thousand of that. You know, and young guy like that and, uh, running around with Ye York and all those guys. Uh, by the time it's uh, payday uh, next uh, when, uh, Tuesday, uh, when we get paid, he, he probably broke, you know, because, you know, he's young, drinking beer, you know, jumping around. and He wasn't really a big star or nothing. He was just a regular worker, uh, work over whatever they say have. And then I come, I come in, they put me over. I have no manager. I have no, nothing going on. I'm just by myself. And I decided that I saw him with a good, whenever he did promos or something, he had a good mouth on him and he had the flute. So I, I said to him, well, I live in the same place with him, you know, different room, but in the same hotel in Santa Monica. And I said, brother, I said, you know, it'll be nice if you, if I could talk to these son of a guns in the office and make you come with me with the flute and, and then control the Arab. You know, the Arab is crazy. You could control them. Uh, and he thought it was a good idea. So I said, let's go to the office and talk to them. I went to the office and they said, nah, you know, he's a baby face. We, we're we going to do this with you. We're going to get your girl to do the smoke and all that shit. This is one week. The next week I did the same thing with him. They same the same bullshit. Nah, you know, we're trying to figure it out. Da, 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 maybe. But then, then the third week they said, Come on down, guys, come on down about 10 o'clock to the office. We want to talk to you. We, we actually thought something was wrong. We go to the office and say, we got a great idea. Uh, you know the cigarette sign they used to say, I'd rather switch than fight with the Winston cigarette, mm -hmm. with the cowboy, with the black guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, but so the, 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 the book, uh, uh, I forget his name now. Uh, he says... Uh, Tom Brunesto, I think is his name. So he says, you know, we got a great idea, uh, Piper. This week, TV, you're going to work with Rook. And there's three minutes, the bell ring. But Rook, you beat the shit out of him. You fucking run out of the ring, grab the mic, and you tell everybody, the hell with it. I don't want to wrestle this guy. I want to I want to be, I want to control this Arab. I want to be his manager. I'm going to, I'm going to make, and then the people stop going and, and then we thought it was a so we told them, oh, it's a great idea. And we went back to the hotel and we got drunk because it wasn't not their idea. It was my idea, but 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 that they wanted it and they said that it was their idea, so we took it. And from there on, we were hot as a firecracker. We even got shot at at the Bakersfield and Lancaster when we work over there with Shabu and all his boys. Shabu was hot because he was champion, and we would we had the, the Mexicans were shooting at us. You could hear the bullets in the in the bleachers. <laughs> so yeah, we got hot as a firecracker. But then they they were playing with my money, and I told them, if "You play with my money, I'm going to go back home. I'm not going to give you." I give you two weeks or three weeks notice and you don't do it. Then I took my shoes and the hell with it and I came back and then Vince says, you know, you're going to 77, you got to go back and fix my bridge. I said, okay, Vince, no problem. I have no problem with Vince. And that's how Brady Piper started to shit. When I went back in 77, he had a brand new uh, convertible Chevy Impala uh, red and black and uh, he, he was making money and he was a uh, big shot. The rest is history, and you know Piper was a hell of a, a hell of a worker. You remain close with him in the years later. He was a, a, a Piper. And I never had a problem. He was a good. He was a good. He's a good good guy. You know, a happy go lucky a Scotsman. You know. We left this too soon. We left this That's too for soon. Sure. That's for sure. Johnny, how about Eddie Mansfield? Johnny, how about you came Eddie Mansfield? In California. You came you him in California. Eddie Mansfield like was in California. Like so many when I was in '77, when I went back, when I went back in '77, uh, again to, for Vince to fix the bridge, uh, he was there, and then I mean, him and I stay in the same, in the same hotel, in the same room, in the same suite, you know, together, until I I was there for a couple of weeks, and he was with me, and that's why I met him, and I introduced him to a girl in Brooklyn, that was friends with my wife. 
the hot sister was friends with my wife from school and everything. And he wound up getting married with this girl. So that's how far I go back with him. How about his 2012? And then, then the rest is history. Because it was the only time connection after that. Uh, I never talked to him again because he, he's a Floridian. And I guess he, he, that's where he lives and that's where he's at. Were you angry with him Were you revealing, angry with trade, him secrets revealing trade, trade secrets? In the business? No, no, no. I never, never. That that shit doesn't bother me. That that okay. uh, that bullshit about secret. Uh, what kind of secret? Uh, <laughs> uh, look at today. Vince been okay. been, 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 been says it was entertainment. So can I can I say so can this? I, and I, I, don't this and I don't want to be offensive, but I never found Eddie Mansfield to be a good worker. Uh, what were you, <laughs> was he a good <laughs> worker? <laughs> because well, no, no, look, you're 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 a you're a gentleman, a scholar. You're a gentleman, a scholar that says the truth, and the truth is the truth. Uh, yes, you're right. He, he's what you call a, a, Lame. a makeup star, you know what I mean? Gotcha. Uh, right. Gotcha. He's, right. Not, he's an okay gotcha. guy, but he's he, he has no – he's okay guy, but uh, uh, he has no – Put it, he's a redneck from, uh, I don't know, I guess okay. Florida. And he has, sometimes he doesn't have no class, you know, in the sense of how he is. So, uh, me, I had no problem with the guy. I mean, we, we stayed together for a couple of weeks, and then and, and he walked, <laughs> he's, 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 a, he's a wannabe superstar, you well, know what yeah, I'm saying? Can I ask you that? There, yeah, there, is no, that? there is no fault on that. Everybody wants to be a superstar, but right. there is there there is such a thing as uh, character, you know. But he always claims he that always he used, that to, sell out he used arenas, to sell out arenas. And and I never found him to be that he guy. Did he sell out arenas? He's he, he gonna sell out his ass. Uh, you know, <laughs> <sell him out. laughs> I mean, I don't I don't want to I don't want to talk about the guy that you fair. brought him up, but fair. whatever he says yeah. about arenas and sell out. Maybe he sold out some arena. You know, there's arenas that hold two thousand people, and if they put you over as a as a main event, you sell them out. I I have done that. Uh, right. I we work. I work with Roddy Piper up in Massachusetts, where we have work in a high spot, and I forget the name of the town. That place was packed, and then the whole idea was for me to work with with with, with him, and then when he puts on the sleeper behind me. The, like the D. David Schultz walks in, supposed to knock him from the back, and we're supposed to come back on the dang. And they, the place was sold out. I never brag about it, and it was with me. Uh, so if they put me with right with, with by back on it, and the place is sold out. So then I sold out. Uh, it wasn't Madison Square Garden, but you're looking at maybe uh, 9,000, 10,000 people uh, in the sure. arena. So that's a sellout. But, but that, I never brag about or sell out. And they put you in there, you sell out because you're a worker. And then, then you got uh, the champion and the, the guy that the such a, such a, such a. And then they work an angle. And Dr. D is supposed to come in and hit him from behind. And then we're supposed to come back in the tag or some kind of shit that they did. But there's somebody walking the ring at the same time, this shit never happened because... Uh, some friend jump in the ring after Dr. D, and we have to beat the hell out of him before we we, we forgot about the, the 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 whole setup. Oh man! And, and that, that, man. the second match never happened. Who the hell's going after? Dr. So you see, so you see, <laughs> sure you could work in some town and sell out and talk about it, and uh, you, why not? He got he's got the right to say whatever he wants. Probably he did, and probably he didn't. Right. I can't say anything because right. I have no idea. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, I we saw like I was in Puerto Rico being the super medic. Remember? Yeah, uh, tag team yep. champions. Uh, tag team and, champions and then champions. we we saw out the, uh, the, uh, the 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 stadium, the the, the the baseball stadium. Gotcha. Me and Jose gotcha. Strada against uh, the Invaders and uh, all those guys. Well, let me explain something to you. We're not the only one. When they, they when they have a stadium like that, they have Tommy, Dick, and Harry in the card. But yet we are the main eventers, so we could say we sold out. But how can we sell out? We got other people in the card. So uh, it's it's a group of uh, characters that the people want to see. And well, I was hotter than the firecracker. And, 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 and there's nobody ever going to take my place in Puerto Rico as a super medic. They try, but they can never get, get anybody that they can make us the heat that I did. Jose Estrada is there. He's my compadre. And him and I were the hottest. I left. They, he put his son, they got other people, and they never were able to bring it back because it wasn't me. 
it depends on the work, you know, depends on the, the kind of heat you're going to put on. I don't know. Well, I don't know what kind of work I am. All I know that I go in the ring and I'm going to make, uh, either I'm going to piss you off or I'm going to make you love me. One of the two. What Johnny about Bean. you? You Johnny love me, Ma Michael? You love me? I love you. I love you. me some Johnny Rod. Hey, can, can we ask him about this? Go ahead. Johnny, we were lucky enough to see you and Jose Estrada close a Madison Square Garden show for the tag team belt against Fuji and Saido, and the whole place was rooting for you guys. Do you remember this? Go ahead, say no. Of course I did. That's not the only place we did it. That's not the only place we work. We work in a lot of places. We work with uh, Tony Gorilla and uh, what's Rick his Martel. name? The other guy there. Rick Martel. Uh, all Rick Martel. Martel. all this Tony Gorilla. Tony Gorilla. Tony Gorilla was a hell of a worker. He he was one guy that I could work with my eyes closed. Never had a problem with him. He's he's a super nice guy. A, a great baby face. He he had every freaking tag team matches champion that that they could give him, and then. I work with him all the time, uh, different, 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 different town, different town, different state. That that no, no, different towns of the here, uh, whether it's Massachusetts, the Connecticut, uh, Maine, all over, Baltimore, Pennsylvania. We, we, me and Jose, work with those guys all over the place, and we tore the house down. Why not? The uh, Jose Strada used to. Be a, uh, a security guy in the school in Brooklyn because he was a soldier and a veteran, and he got that kind of job. And he was jumping around the Mickey Mouse local show. I brought him to TV with me, uh, so we could do TV. I brought the uh, Johnny Rivera. I brought the uh, Steve King. I brought JC Rodriguez. I brought. Okay, I want to tell you how Steve SD King. Jones. Steve King. How I no? How S.D. Jones was born? You want me to tell you? Yeah, special yeah. delivery. Special delivery. Uh, one day, way back, way back, I was, I was, you know, on the, you know, I was a worker, and uh, Gypsy Rodriguez, who had a little Mickey Mouse stuff in the Bronx that hold about sixty people, said, Johnny, man, maybe you could help us out, you know, if you come down to the Bronx and work. Uh, a little bit on our show. Uh, I said, well, look, I could go there and work on the show, but I'm going to do make believe like an, I'm an Arab or something. Actually, I wasn't even Jabaruk. I just make believe I was. Uh, you know, those hicks over there didn't know nothing. <laughs> so I, they say, who do you want to work? And they got about five guys, uh, four Puerto Ricans and S.D. Jones. But he wasn't S.D. Jones. He was Mike uh, Efren Conrad. So... Uh, the thing is, they say, who do you want to work? I saw him. He was so taller and looked bigger, about 245 pounds. And I said, how about the black fellow? And he says, oh, he don't know nothing. The, 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 the Puerto Rican guys are all, all looking to work with me. So I said, no, no, I want to work with him. Ah, come on. I said, no, no, I want to work with him. I work with him. No problem. I did the match. I do my own match. The thing is that he turns around. <laughs> And he says, you know, maybe maybe you can help me. I want to get into the business. I said, look, I have a little basement uh, workout where I live with weights, you know, heavy weights. And then I have a 14 by 14 ropes or tying on the poles with a couple of mats on the floor. I help a few guys there for a little money so we can pay the, the, the basement, you know, so we can work out. I said, you come, you pay the, you paid for the two first, the, the two months. And then I help you a little bit. So he he did. He come down to the low, you know, downtown. He's from the Bronx. He's from, from, from Co-op City. He came down and he did that for a couple of months. And one one time, Gorilla Monsoon having a show in Trenton, New Jersey. So he knew I knew guys. So he said, "Hey Johnny, I need I need I need I need to I need a couple of guys. So maybe you could bring me a guy or two. So I figured, okay, this is a good chance. So I took it. I told him. Uh, meet me, uh, come on down from the Bronx, meet me on the Lancy Street. Uh, Pedro Morales was driving that night. So I said, Pedro, uh, we're going to take my boy with me. Sure, he picked me up in the Lancy Street downtown, by, close to Little Italy there. And I said, uh, uh, we're going to Trenton. 
I was going to Trenton, and when I got to the dressing room, Carrillo Monsoon comes running and said, Johnny, Johnny, you get me the guy? I said, sure, here it is. It, uh, here it is. And he looks at him. He said, hey, how you doing? And and what's your name? And then S.D. John goes, Ephraim Comrade. So <laughs> Gorilla Monsoon is a comedian. And he goes, what the heck? What what was that? Ephraim Comrade. So you know he's from San Antigua or something like that. So he talks real quick, you know. He says, Johnny, what kind of wrestling name is that? I said, wait a minute, Gino. You asked me to bring you a guy. Here it is for special delivery. What the heck do you want? Huh? So he goes, special huh? delivery, Jung, and you're wow. working with him 20 minutes, uh, Broadway. Uh, uh, wow. <laughs> wow. Right off that the cuff like that. That Way was to go, the beginning. Gorilla. Way to go, Gorilla. That's the, that's the beginning of uh, SD, special delivery, Jung, and I broke him in the business. There you go. Well, <laughs> and nobody that knows too. that thank shit because that everybody thinks that, that's, that he was from Philadelphia, right. and they build him up in right. there. And I work with him, and he, I put him over, and everybody thinks that, wow, S.D. John is great. I'm the one that broke him in the business. <laughs> Johnny, it's and, not an easy and question. We give him his, his first, and we gave him the name, too. huh? I was just going to say, I want to switch gears, gears a little bit. It's not an easy question, but being a legend of your home, birthplace of Puerto Rico, birthplace of Puerto Rico what is Johnny Rod's is opinion, Johnny on, Rod's the whole opinion Brody on the whole Bruce Brody tragedy? Brody tragedy. Well, that's 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 not a big that's not a big uh, mystery. Uh, for quite a few years back, quite a few years, Carlos Colon and uh, Victor Jovica and uh, and uh, Victor Quinone were the owners of the company. So. At that, that, that one time, Victor Quijone, who was probably almost half of that company, because he, the, the, you remember Victor Quinones? I'm aware of the name. I'm aware of the name. Well, he was referee sometime for Bruno, for, 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 for Gorilla Monsoon, remember? Yep. And Victor he lived on Victor Quinones. Yes, uh, Victor Quinones. When you say so, that, Victor Quinones was very friendly with the. Uh, Gino and Gino brought him here. And okay. He let okay. him stay at the house. Right? Well, whatever, whatever storyline is there. But uh, at one time, Victor owned practically half of the of, the, uh, of uh, Carlos Colon in Jovica's territory in Puerto Rico, because his mother uh, died and left him a hotel and all kinds of money. So this guy had young. He had a lot of money. Hmm. But. By him getting out of the business and making money back, he starts selling 10% here, 10% there, 15% here. So uh, Gino, have, Gorilla Manson had 10%. Uh, Abdullah the Butcher had 10%. Uh, Bruce Obori had 10%. I don't know who else had 10 15%. So all those guys with 10% and all that, to Vito Quignone, they were part of the, the game of the, of the company. Right. So if you got 10%, and I have 10%. percent i am not your boss, and you're not my boss. We're we, we're equal, right? Mm-hmm. In pr in premise, okay. yes. Okay. So premise, now yes. here's what happened. There was, according to the storyline that I hear, is that Jose Gonzalez has 10 percent, and Bruce Brody got 10 percent, and like I said, uh, all, all all the guys that have 10 percent, they're equal. That nobody could tell nobody else above because they're the same they're the same amount of bosses but somehow there was an argument or put over where Gonzalez tries to tell him how how to do things because he thinks he's bigger than the other guy and they had a little spouse going on but according to what i know the guy must have put a, a knife in, in a tower and went into the dressing room shower where nobody's around and Freaking, according to what they say, they stab him in the groin, and by the time they bring the ambulance, the guy bled to death. And then the only guy that was there that we know for sure was um, uh, Tony Atlas. Tony Atlas. Tony Atlas, yes. And then Tony Atlas know the same thing storyline that everybody else know because he wasn't in the shower, he was in the dressing room, but he knows he was there the night that it happened. And by the time the ambulance come and took him to the hospital. The guy bled to death, and that's the that's the legit thing. What storyline they gave the the the, the 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 police or the investigator? Who the heck knows? 
and that's 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 about it. Nobody knows anything else. They they put a cover on that baby, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, Johnny, nobody knows no, nothing. Johnny. Nobody can accuse nobody of nothing because it happened. Now uh, they really didn't. They have, they have the power. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Did you go work Puerto Did you Rico go work Puerto after Rico that happened? After no? that happened or no? No. I want, once I leave a territory and they play with my my respect, I don't go. Gotcha. Gotcha. So Johnny, they you wanted me to Johnny, go. They wanted me to go back, but if I go back, then I'm gonna have to have my cousin uh, cut a couple of beers off, you know? Yeah. <laughs> There you go. You, mentioned, you mentioned running with Andre running the Giant. With Andre Can you tell us an Andre the Giant story? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. What about Andre? Do you have a story that, you that a story between you and him that, that, that uh, tickles well, your fancy? Well, I'll tell you what. You, 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 you saw my wife, right? Yes. Yes. She's 65 years old now, going to 66. When she was 21 and 22 years old, and when she that's the beginning of my life because I was married first for 15 years. Remember, I told you that I was in California, and the reason why I left because I came home to get divorced because I was having problems. That's the reason why I left California. Okay. More likely because uh, I wasn't doing too good with the uh, home stuff, you know. But what happens now is that as uh, soon as I came home, and by seventy, by the end of seventy-six and the beginning of seventy-seven. I bump into this young lady. Uh, I don't know. God, God must have done that because I had no no involvement on being with no woman or nothing. You know, you got your own problem. You just want to mind your business, and I'm we were sorry. having problems. And it was down the, down the street. And my son was 15 years old. My oldest son, he's 59 years old now. My daughter's in up, up in the right behind him, and. And those were my two first kids from my first marriage, which I was for 15 years married. And in 76, I went up getting divorced at the end of by the 77. And then I went to the I went to the garden, and I bump into uh, to this young lady here. And uh, out of the blue, out of the blue, I mean, she she went she wasn't even a wrestling fan. She went there to see. Uh, for the second time wrestling at the garden because a friend, a friend was uh, 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 how do you say? Uh, uh, she was following wrestling, uh, and, and, and she she bought uh, she gave her a ticket the first time, and the second time she bought a ticket, and they were looking for looking for a friend, and she bumped against me at the hotel, me dropping Gorilla Monsoon, uh, not Gorilla Monsoon, dropping Cicluna down. From, from the garden, driving them down to 50th Street to the uh, 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 Howard Johnson Hotel. And by the time I drank a couple of beers and went into the bathroom and come out in the hallway, I bump into her. I have no, I can't tell you the real story because if I tell you the real story, uh, you're not going to believe it and, and, and it's a fantasy. It, it happens. God knows what he's doing. I bumped into her and she's looking for her friend. Her friend came in and got an autograph, walked out the other door, and she left them in the hallway looking for her. And I come out of the bathroom, I bump into her, the rest was history. Okay, that's a long, long story. That's 40, it's going to be 47 years ago. And the funny part about it is that, <laughs> that after a while, and she's, she's with me for a while, for four years before we got married. And then, then we go to the pub, and uh, you know I'm good friends with Andre, because Andre and I, we we, we hang out with me, Cicluna, Andre, Denucci, uh, Arnold Scullin. We spend a lot of nights, uh, you know, uh, traveling and hanging out, and we were buddies. And uh, I, I go to the pub with uh, with her, and Andre's there, and he wants to play ping pong with the machine. And she won. She loves to play that, you know, the ball that you hit it and it goes all over the place, the little ball. Well, he'll pick up the the, the, the machine with his hand, and then and instead of using the thing, he, and he's bouncing around, and she's fighting with him. And well, but Andre, that's not fair. You you you're not supposed to pick up the machine and and have the little ball run all over the thing so get <laughs> to get your thing. And then he used to have a lot of fun doing that because we we were buddies and. Uh, we we had nothing to lose. You understand? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, but don't play pinball yeah, with Andre. Don't play Chiefs. pinball with Andre Cheese. Yeah, but no, but he was just <laughs> laughing and joking and having fun with her. And my wife is a a sweetheart. She she's friendly with everybody. She's not a uh, you know she, that's the way she is. That's why I, I want hard to say hello to you guys. You and looked then, out. You the, looked funny, out. the funny part about it is that time went on. Even he even slept them on a basement apartment that I had in Queens because uh, he went to the airport and dropped his girlfriend. He wanted me to pick him up so we could go in. I picked him up and he didn't sleep all night. He got drunk and then come over. He said, Johnny, it's two o'clock and I sleep. We're going to start the island to have a show. And he says, can I lay down? And he's laying down and burping, button and, and, and you know, he's a regular, he's a regular, he was, a, Andrew was a regular man, you know what I mean? How'd you get him Only into the basement? Only that he was, a, he, was a, he was, a, he was the real giant. Hey, how'd you fit him into the yeah, basement apartment? It's kind of big. It's kind of big. Because, uh, <laughs> he's a, he's a, he, because he was a friend. I, I had a basement apartment, he had to walk down backwards. Okay. 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 You know, he talk. was, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> We're regulars. We 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 got nothing to do. With. And I told you that the girl, the girl that the, uh, the girl that uh, this is a real McCoy. The girl that invited my my wife when they were kids, friends, you know, the age of 21 and 22. The girl that was a wrestling fan and invited my wife. They were friends from kindergarten hmm. in Brooklyn from little girls and uh, when they grew up at that age they were still friends and she invited her because she had extra tickets the first time she got a ticket the second time she bought her own and that's when i met my wife for the first time but that girl that that we're talking about is uh, nancy argentino the girl that had the problem with the snooker i was going to ask you i was going to ask you about that do you know well, anything I just, about that I just story? Told, I, just that told, story? I, just told, I just told you there's nothing else to ask. That's the girl. Did you? And the reason, did you, and I had nothing to do with in introducing her to Snooker or my wife or anything. Had nothing to do with it. That they, 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 they that was their own, their own meeting. They how, nothing, how did? How there did, was, how no did, how did was no connection. There is no connection with us except that that was her friend from child. Oh but how did your wife, but how did your wife handle, wife after, handle after, the after the unfortunate passing? Of passing of nothing, passing nothing. Passing. I don't handle. I'm a pro. Uh, no, once, your once, wife. Uh, no, your once, wife. once, once, once I met my wife, and she was with me. I said, "There is, uh, there is a separation. She goes her way, and you come in my way. You could always call and say hello, but then there, there is no hanging in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the in the scenery. You know what I mean? I got you." How are you I'm, I'm a real, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a real McCoy. How I we, was born in the hills of, we, I'm a real, I was born in the hills of Puerto Rico and raised downtown in Little Italy, and I'm a real McCoy, and I do things before it happens. You understand? Yeah. How yeah. hard was it for you to share a locker room with Snooker after that? Well, no, uh, it has no. Uh, that we don't, why should I have? Why should we have any problems? It, it, it's, it's got nothing to do. They were, they, there is nothing to do with uh, what our. Uh, this business. I don't. I don't this it's not in my business. You understand? Okay. No, but Johnny, let me ask no, you. Johnny, let me she ask was you. a friend of your wife for her whole life. Her whole life. Wasn't your wife Wasn't upset your over wife this upset at all? Over this at all? Yes, sure. but sure. you don't understand. It's it's. Uh, that's what I'm trying to tell you. When 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 shit like that happened, and you have nothing to do with it. Yes, you feel bad, but then after that, you don't have to be doing anything because there's not, nothing you could do. What what is it that you could do? Right, right. You Johnny, can't do about anything. One of my, Johnny, uh, how about one of my not uh, to switch gears, but we will. Um, one of my favorites one growing of my up favorites was quick draw. And and otherwise, quick otherwise, draw. us us talking about it now, it makes no no no, and it, it's just a history uh, written or thing that happened. Uh, I, I I just said it because they, they, they was all they made films out of it. They they talk about it. They say that we that the, me and uh, me and uh, the sister said that me and, and Ellen, my 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 wife, introduced hard to to them, and that's not true. 
it was the opposite. I just told you how it happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The reason yeah. why I met yeah. my wife is because she had extra tickets and her friend didn't go. My right. wife was never a wrestling fan. Right. She she likes boxing. She likes uh, basketball, but she don't like. She never had nothing to do as a kid. As a growing up with her, they, they they never. She never had nothing to do with wrestling. Uh, she was invited. She liked it in the garden for the first time. They were friends. So she bought a ticket for the, for the second time just to go enjoy herself. But she wound up bumping against me because she was looking for her friend. God put us together. We've been 40, almost 47 years. We had two kids. We had a girl and a boy. My wife is a twin. She has a twin sister. Today, my son, our son, has a twin kids. And then my, my the, the, the sister has a girl and a boy. So you see... We have a family, my wife and I. We have a, we created a big family. Johnny, if I can ask about, Johnny, if I can um, ask about, you, know, you do have connections you know, you to Arnold Scullin in the past. At one, one point, point one, one of my favorites from back in the day, Rick McGraw was McGraw actually McGraw being was taken actually to the ring by Arnold. Arnold. What happened with Rick McGraw? Why did he never get over? Why did he never get over? Quick draw. Quick draw. Yeah, quick draw, McGraw. It wasn't too quick straw. Uh, <laughs> quick sorry, straw. Thing, <laughs> quick sorry. Straw. He, he, that, that, that kid, that guy. What went wrong there? Uh, went he's wrong not there? a bad guy. He wasn't a bad guy or anything like that. Loved he him. was uh, delusional in the sense that oh. that he came from uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know Carolina, Florida, whatever the fuck he comes from, and he was supposed to be state uh, amateur uh, champion in wrestling, and he was a. Uh, 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 you know, bench press, I don't know how many pounds and all that bullshit. He was only about 5'10", 5'9", right. and, uh, sure. and he thought he was a gorilla. And and when he was in the ring, and he, they put him over. So they tried to put him over, but he thought he was King Ping. And they put him with me. He didn't know how to get over. So every time they put him with me, he was always trying to go behind me and shit. So I showed him that you don't go behind me because you can wind up being a kangaroo, uh, me a raccoon. And uh, uh, after a while, they put him with this guy, and they put him with that guy, a tag team in here. They even had tag team with Andrew the Giant to see if he right. gets over. Right. He fucking not, never right. got over. He was too proud to be in the ring. And the last time I worked with him, they put him in Torrington, Connecticut, and they had a, a sellout in a high school somewhere. And uh, Arnold Scullin says, Johnny, you and uh, McGraw go on and give me 20-minute Broadway. And he asked, he he quickly asked Colin, did you say 20-minute Broadway? And Colin says, what's the matter? Your ears are plugged? Yeah, I want 20-minute Broadway. Me? Uh, he said 20-minute Broadway. I said, okay, I, I don't, no problem. You got it, baby. I don't have a problem. But he, he questioned this because he thought they were going to put him over. Well, he, he was pissed. He went in the ring. One would go behind me. I gave him the, the beating of his of his wrestling career mm. because there was no TV. So, and all the boys watch and I have no problem doing that because he's a, uh, I think he was Carolina state uh, wrestling champion. And I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't have no, no record nowhere about being no wrestling champion. All I know is you don't go behind me and get away with it and mm. try to look, make me look like a jerk because I don't know how to wrestle. All I know is that they taught me how to, defend myself so and and I, I i'm proud to be saying that in the years in the beginning around 1963 or whatever the fuck it was or, or 65 or 67 whatever remember carl gosh when he was in new york with uh rene goulet doing oh, the gosh. tag team oh, and rene goulet of course rene goulet, of course well uh carl gosh who's a good shooter and Victor Rivera and myself and Frank Martinez and Gypsy Joe, we used to go to Brooklyn and boy, that we trained with Carl Gotch. So Carl Gotch teached me, I, the, I would say they were close to a half a year, at least one day a week or two days a week that we got together in Brooklyn because we only had like an hour. And uh, I, I, took a, I took an interest in learning how to, how to, how to, how to, how to make somebody look stupid in the ring and don't look like I did it? You know what I mean. <laughs> so he, he he learned, but 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 you see, it has nothing to do with me doing that. He's dead. The guy is dead. He didn't learn how to take care of himself. I don't know how he died, but they found him dead. Right. 
You know, Johnny. You know about you know, that, Johnny. right? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. yes. yep. yes. Died I young. mean, I don't even Died know young. where they found him, but he was supposed to be dead in some hotel room or something. I Why? I don't know. He was taken. Heart attack. But, but yeah, knows? because I but think he was knows? taken. Maybe he was taking steroids. I have no idea. Probably. Probably. And I have nothing Probably. bad to say. All I know is that he wasn't my, uh, uh, you know, he wasn't a guy that that I could go in the ring and be proud to have a match like I used to have with uh, Rick Mattel. Rick Mattel is one of the best baby baby face workers that I ever worked with. He's great. Nice. We love nice. Mattel. So I could I could so, I, I could I could close my eyes and have a hell of a match with Rick Mattel without any problem. Tony Gorilla, Tony Gorilla. I could go in the ring and with no finishes, no nothing, and have a hell of a tear the house down with Tony Gorilla. Well, a so, hell of a hell well, of a worker, so, uh, a hell of a good guy. Never me, never complain about nothing. Let me ask you this: ask Kevin you this. Von Erich, Kevin you von tested Eric. Kevin Von Eric in the Kevin garden. Von Eric in the How garden. was Kevin? Well, von, Ke how was Kevin von <laughs> von listen, listen, Kevin Von Eric. He was a young guy, very young, uh, you know, amateur wrestler. Uh, the family has the money. The father is a promoter. They got, they, they put him, they, they go, they go over a lot in that territory. But they, they send him to New York. They give him a tryout. Uh, Vince probably want to use him, but they always want to test him first. Even whether they put you on TV or a regular house or the Master Square Garden was the best way to test. Please ask me, you know, can you do 15, 20 minutes with him and get him over somehow? Of course, Vince, no problem. Why not? I love Vince. Whatever he wants, I don't care. The funny thing about it is I go in there, and as soon as I go, the guy wants to hit me in the head. He wants to slap me around. Uh, you know, he's working, but he's hitting me in the head. He has no respect of uh, the regular uh, entertainment or the regular challenge. He, he's, he's treating me like I, I'm here. Uh, I'm ready to, to smack you all over the place. And then he's trying to do all kinds of high spots about, uh, I don't know, about wrestling or something. Well, he learned a lesson real quick. And, uh, uh, yeah, he went over, but he, the match was the shits. And uh, I don't know if you guys seen it, but I it's have. still, it's still I have. Yeah, and, and that's not a match. That's not the kind of match I want. I want you to get over and then not, not and by the time they announced his name, he was gone. He disappeared. So you you wasn't proud enough to be in the garden with me. Uh, I'm not supposed to be somebody that you could be proud enough to wrestle. You're a schmuck. You just started. But that's okay because I'm not. Uh, I didn't lose no weight over that. I, mean, you, I guess what? Now that we're talking about Ben Eric, did you know that I'm that I just finished training? McConnelly Holtz is a movie star who was in. Uh, uh, on TV with that series, with Chicago Police, uh, McConnelly Halls. If you if you if you Google the name McConnelly Halls, he's a, a movie star that I just finished training, and he's doing the the movie Fix Boneric the Father. Oh. I trained him for him to do the claw. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. The Iron Claw, yep. right? The, the Iron movie. Claw, right? Yeah. The movie. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm I'm the guy that trained. Uh, McConnelly Hall, the main, the main guy, which is McConnelly Hall, is doing the father. He's he's the father on the movie, and uh, I don't know who's gonna be Kevin because Kevin's alive. Remember the other four kids die. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's a new yep. movie coming out, and I'm, and uh, I just finished. I just finished a couple of weeks back. I finished uh, McConnelly. He's a. Uh, he looks like Bon Eric, but I, you know. He, he don't know nothing about wrestling, but I, I took him for a couple of months and uh, I, I I did it at the gym. Well, Johnny. Well, Johnny. Anybody that grew up in the anybody Northeast. Anybody that grew up in the Northeast knows that you're an knows icon. Knows that you're an icon. And everybody knows. And everybody knows that if it wasn't that for it wasn't Johnny Rod, Johnny Rod, it wouldn't be the Pharaohs' favorite federation. Favorite federation. There would be no. There would be ECW. no ECW. Oh, Did you know oh, you were training you know, all isn't these that superstars? Some, isn't superstars? isn't that isn't that something right? Damn. <laughs> was, Damn. That's true. It won't be because when uh, Paul Heyman. Was young, very young, and we're going back. And he was a a kid, he's still a kid, maybe 17, 18, 19, 20, I don't know. He was around, and he was kissing ass 
the, all over the place because you know he wanted to be involved in the wrestling business. Not, he's not a bad guy. He's a good guy. <laughs> he just wants to be in the business, and then they, he he just want to do whatever he had to do. He'd be driving the band for Mitte Fuji, and Mitte Fuji would use him like a slave. Come on, brother, we're gonna go up north, and you're gonna be the driver. So you know he's gonna drive. It'll be me and Hans Colin and under the giant and who's the driver <laughs> Paul he be he be driving and and um, whether I sit and be co-pilot whether Mr. Fuji be co-pilot and then uh, he make this guy drive and uh, we're going down uh, miles and miles and then he said pull over and we're going to do a couple of uh, 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 squats in the, in the parking lot and uh, so so you could wake up and drive again that's how he started, you know. He wanted to be in the business, so he, he did his duties. And then Paul Heyman wanted me to go with him in Philadelphia and bring the boys and um, be a booker or work with him and build the company that, that, that he wanted to build, and he was nobody. And the father gave him some money so he could do a little Mickey Mouse TV, and you know how it started. And then bling, bling, bling. I said, no, I, don't, I, I have a job, and I have a... I only do this two way, two days a week at Gleason's. I says I could give you the boys. I can take all the boys you want. And at the, uh, Kevin Sullivan came around and start hanging around a little bit, trying to get some boys. And I and I let them all go. Bill DeMar, uh, Taz, all those guys. Uh, you know, Damien Demento and anybody that uh, the Twin Towers, all those guys. So. I let them go, go, do do a little bit independent with them, you know. I, I didn't care because I only did two days a week at uh, Gleason's Gym uh, from 2 to 8. The rest I was doing the uh, newspaper job, and I wasn't going to leave that. With that, that, that. That's my union job. So I didn't want to go with him. I, I could have gone with him and be probably partners. Who knows? Uh, that's how it started. And then uh, Tommy, Dick, and Harry started coming in for him, you know, and he... Who who he gave a thousand dollars to come and work with a, a funk junior with the other guy and the other guy he you know he kept doing it and it was cheap to do the bingo hall in Philadelphia and that was a rat hall you know with rats around but 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 it's an arena and and they built it they built it by doing uh, uh, you know you know what the crowd was holy shit holy yep. shit yep. Yep. and then that that yep. that. That got over by with all these uh, hoodlums. They want to be, see that kind of game. <laughs> and before you know, the only reason why ECW is still mentioning, I bet you you guys don't even know why. Why? 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 Because remember, here's what happened. The game is clean. The game is top. The game is on uh, pay-per-view by, by Vince McMahon and the big shots. Here comes ECW, where it's nothing but a rat hole, and everybody's cursing, and everybody's hitting people with the with the Bob, Bob lights, you know, every the, the garbage every can, roll. garbage can, the chairs, they they cutting yep. everybody, they 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 cursing like crazy, and and then the 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 the, the big shots, the ones with the big power, don't want the government. Well, let let put it this way. Say some kid sits somebody hit with a with one of those bulb lights, you know, those fluorescent lights, and break it over their head. Say some kid decided to take a bulb and then hit some other kid in the head, and then the, the government will come out and say, that we have to ban wrestling from this shit. So what happens is, it, be, it gives pro wrestling a big a bad name to, to the shit guy and to Vince McMahon. So Vince McMahon decided... You know what? Let me make this guy an offer he can't refuse. In the sense of uh, buying the, the, the junkie uh, name, make a program on TV that looks like ECW, but they're not doing the same shit. And after a while, you know today we don't have an ECW program, right? Right. Right. So Vince figured that's the only way to kill him. You know, buy him out, give him a job. Uh, you, they do like the mafia. The mafia gives the guy that, that makes a noise, gives him a job so they can keep an eye on him, and that's it. And if he's if he follows the order, he stays. If he don't follow the order, they'll 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 squash him. 
But right now, he's been there. He made nothing but money. He became kingpin of the game. He's not the boss, but he's involved until right. he die. Right. Yep. And the same thing yep. with the with the, the king, Lola. That's one of the biggest territory in the wrestling business. Yeah. Actually, yeah. those guys are the king of the wrestling business. They go back with the Ron Fuller, the, the, the Ron Fuller, the great... That the grand the grandfather of Ron Fuller and the great great grandfather they go back to the the McCalls and the Hutfields uh, in the sense of uh, doing pro wrestling. They 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 they're the real McCoys of pro wrestling uh, territorial building up. Uh, yeah. Tennessee, are you kidding me? Uh, actually, more than whatever Vince happened to have the garden and he became King Pink, but the the the, the Tennessee is one of the biggest territories. And, and wrestling build up uh, games of all kinds. You know that. Why do you think Why Vince you think Senior Vince Senior did not take did Andy, not Kaufman take Andy Kaufman in, in and, 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 and do nothing because it's a, it's a he's a Mickey Mouse comedian. It's That's already right. dead. That's it's right. al it's already dead. It's uh, it's a one time uh, high spot and. Uh, only, only, only Kaufman gets built up. Uh, it doesn't build the wrestling business up. So uh, you think when he went to uh, Memphis, so that, went didn't to Memphis help wrestling? that didn't help wrestling? Nah. nah, nah. The it's, exposure it's on the David Letterman, David Letterman show? David Letterman look, show? Look, 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 it's a flash. Okay, I'll give you what a flash is. Okay. Who's the okay. biggest, who's the biggest uh, wrestler in India? Oh, I know where he's oh, going. I know where he's going. Kali? Yeah, great who's, Kali. Who's the biggest yeah, wrestler Kali. in India? Great Kali, right? Great Kali, right? Oh, good, great Kali. Is Great Kali, you're, are you a fan of Great Kali? No. I, I never was. <laughs> <laughs> because if you're a fan of Great Kali, I'm going to shut this form down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Nope, no, the, I'm the not. line no, stays no, open. You know, you know why? You know why I ask you that? The yeah. great Kali, yeah. just a, he, he's not, not, I'm not, I'm not mad at him. I, I had right. nothing to do right. with, with him. I don't even know the guy. He don't, he don't, he probably doesn't even know who Johnny Ross is. But here's what happened. He should. I'd rather work with Andrew the Giant every night, seven days a week, twice a week, than work with Jake the, the Kali one time because he, he's not a fucking wrestler. Right. He just stands there like a, like a big uh, guy moving his hand. And, and he can't even walk. He's right. a freak of nature, but he's right. a, a human being, a freak of nature. And then Vince, who's a moneymaker, decided, wow, we found this guy in, in, in India. Let's make him an icon here in the wrestling. They went to India and they made nothing but money, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Okay. Right. That's what he did. They went to, uh, to Arabia. They put a fucking guy there. They made him look like he's the King Ping. And they, they, they had the red carpet, and the prices were outrageous. Yeah. But, the, but yeah. this is how Vince makes money. Why, why, why not? But Greg Kelly is not a pro wrestler. What, what, what the heck is he pro wrestler about? He, he doesn't know how to get off the floor. Good points, John. Good points, not John. Andre. Andre was a wrestler, a professional wrestler. Gotcha, and Andre could, gotcha, I could Johnny. Write, Me and Andre could wrestle each other. He, I, he doesn't need two guys to wrestle. He can wrestle just me and him. And I wrestle under, uh, when, when they put me and, uh, and Jose Estrada wrestle under two against one, mm. he'll, he'll throw Jose through the ropes, and then he starts bullshitting with me. I know how to work with Andre. Mm. Uh, whether Jose wants to work with him and knows how to work with him, that's it. And Jose, Jose is a good man. Jose is my partner. Jose, Jose is um, uh, my compa. He, he's, he baptized my daughter. Oh, okay, nice. so he's my compadre. Nice. I got uh, nothing to say about Jose, uh, but Jose is not the same worker as I am. I don't care what he believes in. I don't give a shit if he knows how to drop kick better than me. That's 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 not what it's all about. He's my boy. Yeah, I brought I, I I helped him in the business. I, I I went to Puerto Rico. I did the super medic with him. We tore the house down. We were the hottest thing there, and still the hottest thing there. They never had another pair of super medic like us. All because. I wasn't going to say it now. I'm going to put my, on my shoulder. All because Johnny Ross. Johnny Ross left. The, 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 the medics were done. They can never, they can never bring another one to, to build it up. So that proves the point what I could do with a mask. Well, Johnny, I want and to I'm thank not you. Sure, I'm, not, I'm thank not bragging. I'm not bragging. To hell with bragging. I could still go in the ring. and I, Actually, I, Michael, I could go with you in the ring and have a match. 
You, Johnny, you and, killed and, me. And, and wait a minute, Michael. And Michael, and I will put you over like a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, I want to thank you for taking fact, the time. As a matter of fact, nobody, nobody's going to believe it. Say, Michael just knocked Johnny Rods out. He tried <laughs> to get up, and he was dizzy. And then people will not believe it. Shit, yes. I gave him the foreign object. That's what it's all about. That's what, <laughs> that's what it's all about. <laughs> well, what it's all about is, Johnny, well, we want to thank you for joining us. But this could go on for four hours. You are an icon. You are an icon. I, 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 I'm lost for words for what you've done for this industry, what you've done for its fans. All I could say is thank you. Well, I guess we're, dis we're disappearing because I hear the voice and uh, – we could do this again. We haven't talked about nothing yet. <laughs> uh, I would love to have a part two if you're willing to do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Anytime, anytime you want, Michael. I don't have a problem. That I enjoy this. Uh, listen, we didn't do nothing wrong. I, I got. Uh, uh, well, I don't know if you can see my logo. You see my logo? Ah. I see it. Ah. I see it. That's the world of unpredictable wrestling. There's two W's and a U. Nice. And I drew go. that. Nice. And then and, and it was a design. And it's on Gleason's gym here in Dumbo in Brooklyn in 131 Water Street. And anybody who wants to really break into the business, come to see me at Gleason's gym here in Dumbo, Brooklyn. And then Google my name and they'll cut it. And then they, but they got to come ready to, 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 to kill because it's not easy. It, 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 it's the real McCoy. You want it, you come. You, you, I don't call myself a wrestling school. Right? I'm a, I, I have a well unpredictable club of pro wrestling. I don't believe in wrestling. I believe in wrestling clubs where, where everybody's a member and everybody helps everybody. If you, you can sweep the ring and you don't have to be ashamed. That's the name of the game. So, uh, Michael, uh, Monte, and um, what's the other gentleman? Jimmy Farrow. Jimmy Who's Farrow. Me? Jimmy, uh, you guys are good guys. Anytime you want me back, just mention. Next time we do it, you, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask my uh, daughter. Give me Use your phone, phone, and we'll be, we'll, we'll snap the finger where, because I want to see you guys' faces instead of just mine. Okay. Beautiful. There you go. Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen. And you, ladies and gentlemen. Like, lots of blessing. I hope you guys make a killing. I hope you continue, and we could do more. And I got, uh, we, we, it, 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 it's, it's not, it's no big deal. You know what I mean? Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Thank Thank you, Johnny. Johnny. I have a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with you guys. It was short. I'm sorry that we have problem getting it on. Maybe, maybe it's the I don't know. This this is not the first time. It happened with with, with Jerry Briscoe too. There'll be a sequel. Be we'll a have sequel. a sequel. We'll have a sequel. Yes, anytime you want. Just mention it and we do it. The uh, great Johnny Rods. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. The great Johnny Rods, bud. That was great. Can't be. That. A little unpredictable, but I, I, had, I to. had to get You know I had to do it, so I did it. Okay, it's gone now. Let me I'm, tell you I feel something. better now. No, it was good. Backlund, awesome. Johnny Rods. Very simple. Simple enough. I'm waiting for Frank Williams to descend from the rafters. And he didn't. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he hit anything. No, no. I mean, I think Jay Will said that he thought he was hiding, that he knew more about the Brody thing. I don't think so. No, I not think, the least. I think he said, yeah. hey, this is what I think this I heard happen. This is what he thinks. Looks like it didn't shock him. No. No, it didn't. It, you know, I wonder if, though, it did, it did put a big, dark shadow over Puerto Rican wrestling in general. I mean, it still has to this day. We're still talking about this. But I guess, you it's know. One of the biggest things. It is. Well, anyway, we want to thank everybody for joining us. Thank you. Tomorrow, Ken Patera. This is Mike Monty. This is the Pharaoh. And until tomorrow, with the world's strongest man, at least that's what he was during back in the day, one of the greatest intercontinental champions of all time, Ken Patera. Later.